Welcome to Voices from the Bench, a dental laboratory podcast. Send us an email at info at voicesfromthebench.com or look for us on Facebook at Voices from the Bench. Greetings and welcome to episode 157 of Voices from the Bench. My name is Elvis. And my name is Barbara. How's it going? It's going pretty good. I hear you're in the 90s this weekend, which is kind of intense for this time of the year, isn't it? I thought you would love that. I saw that meme on Facebook and took a picture and sent it to you. (laughs) 92, 93, 94 this weekend, which is pretty damn hot. That's hot. Because last in the 60s, so yes. That's Some hot. laying out in the sun, just saying. Well, take advantage of it while you can, because <laughs> I'm sure you're going to have a hurricane in about two weeks, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you're just jealous. A little That's bit. That's all right. I'd be jealous if I was you, too. <laughs> it's all right. So, Barb and I, we are getting ready to record remotely at the DLAT conference. Yep. But by the time this episode is released, it will be done, and we will have talked to a ton of amazing guests and speakers from the first conference of the year. Ah, and the crowd goes wild. Yeah, since this is coming out after we've done that, let's talk about all the great people we talked to. Remember that one guy, and he talked about that one thing? It was amazing. <laughs> I got a picture today from Bennett with yes. us from the bench, so I thought that was cool. Yeah, we're all set up and ready to go. Mm-hmm. So please look for future episodes featuring us live, not live, from the Argon booth from Texas. But by now, everybody should be getting ready for the next event, which is the Vision 21 meeting happening April 8th to 10th in Nashville, Tennessee at the Gaylord Opryland Resort. Crab- Wild again. (laughs) Cannot wait. This meeting is going to be amazing, and we encourage anyone and everyone to attend. Now, Barb, you're definitely going to be there, right? Yes, I am. Is this your first meeting since the pandemic? Are you you, like just super stoked? I am freaking doing backflips. I cannot. I I am just happy to travel and get out of town and go see everybody and talk to everybody and learn and network. Oh, yeah, I'm psyched. Yeah, that's like the understatement of the year. <laughs> like ten meetings by now. Yeah, I know. First one in a year. It's insane. I'm still a maybe Good. because of this stupid pandemic. I'm leaving it as a maybe up until the day of, because I am a seven hour drive away from Nashville. If I could just tell my wife I'm just running to the store, I'll be right back. <laughs> I'll drive down there. <laughs> So, while the podcast will not be there officially recording as of now, we still encourage everyone to go to one of the coolest meetings held every year. Well, this year it's in a different place in a different part of the year, but you can still go. Head over to nadl.org to see the schedule and to register. And remember, Barb will be there for the first time, not as president. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So, Barb, I want to ask you, you're an artist when it comes to dental ceramics. You talk about it a lot. You do amazing work. But do you have any creative non-dental skills? Nope. You don't do, like, pottery or basket weaving or sword making? (laughs) You're going to find this funny. Yeah? I just got divorced in uh, December. Yeah. And I love cooking. I love grilling. I love baking. And so I consider that be creative at my age after all my years of being on this earth i love cooking i get that that does take a certain quality of artistic ability i think so i put things in an air fryer and turn it on that's my (laughs) cooking i don't have any artistic skills it skipped my generation i have a grandma that was a professional artist an aunt that's a musician wow i got nothing jeez sorry yeah that's what's cool about today's guest So while you were off celebrating your dad's birthday, yeah, Uh I got to talk to a really cool dental technician who also happens to be a professional artist and musician. Tom Panay grew up loving art and music, and after a time as a dental assistant, Tom booked a gig at a dental office opening, and his career as a removable technician took off. We talk about the pros and cons of being a one-person dental tech working directly with patients, and balancing a creative life between teeth, wood, and music. 
So join us as we chat with Tom Penny. Hey, Barb. I called Oradent the other day about their P5 milling machine. Super. How did it go? I was introduced to the consumables Oradent offers, such as Delta Zirconia, Oradent ZR, Oradent Cutting Tools, and Quest PMMA. How convenient. You know what? You can buy the mill and the materials from them. Yeah, if you think that's convenient, you can also buy furnaces by Napertherm, and vacuums by Renfert. Plus, I don't have to talk to a different person every time I call. I have a rep dedicated just for me. I have heard that their service is amazing. Absolutely. Oradent offers high quality cutting tools made here in the USA. And they have great options for zirconia. Delta Zirconia, which is a super cost savings for labs, and Oradent ZR, made proudly here in the U.S. of A. Do they still offer dental alloys? You know, Oradent started off manufacturing alloys and will always provide high-quality alloys for dental labs, one of the few companies in the U.S. to still manufacture their own alloys. Is there anything that they don't supply dental labs? Actually, they also offer dental scanners and a 3D printer from Shining 3D. Hold up. Does that scanner have its own design software? Actually, Oradent offers ExoCAD for your designing needs. Nice. I'm not the best with technology and setting up all of this equipment, just saying. Well, we know, but that's <laughs> fine. Oradent has a technical support team who can help with installing or troubleshooting any problems. Wow, Oradent definitely is a one-stop shop for any dental lab's needs. How do we get in touch with them? You can always call our friends at Oradent at 1-800-422-7373. Or you can visit them at their website at oradent.com. We super appreciate your support of the podcast, Oradent. Thank you so much. Voices from the Bench. The Interview. So how do you say your name? Pan- Panay. Panay. Panay, yep. Like the pasta? Like the pasta, yeah. Yep, just spelled different. Yeah, but you must get that all the time. Like the pasta. The I, yeah, or panai, you know. Yeah. And everybody thinks it's French, and I'm like, no, I'm full-blooded Italian. It's, oh, well, yeah, that's the yeah. pasta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's panay. Yep. Well, we are happy to have on the podcast today, after a few tries... <laughs> we welcome Tom Panay to the podcast. How are you, sir? Good. How are you doing? Thanks. Thanks for having me on. I'm doing well. So we tried to connect a while ago, had some technical difficulties. Yeah. And then we tried to connect again, and you, unfortunately, came down with some COVID and were kind of uh, down and out for a while. You know, you try to be safe and you try to do everything you can. And it, no matter what you do, if it's going to get you, it's going to get you, I guess. But yeah, it was pretty nasty. At least yeah. I could say, been there, done that, had it and lived through it and feel pretty good now. So Yeah, I was going to ask, are you pretty well recovered? I hear a lot of people have, uh, what's that called? The like lingering, lingering effects. effects yeah. You know, it started off real quick with losing my smell and taste and then quickly progressed into like... Oh, breathing difficulties oh, and then chest pain. And I think that's when I talked to you that one time. I couldn't even talk. I had to like text you. Because yeah. Was, but then it felt like like a heart attack and stuff. It was just wow. crazy, crazy stuff because it was pneumonia on top of it. And oh. then, um, yeah, <laughs> wow. yeah, that didn't help. Yeah. Yeah, with the, yeah. I got the whole thing. Fast as it came, it, you know, fast as it went away, you know, after some steroids and yeah. ran around for a couple of weeks, it was gone. And then, yeah, no lingering effects for a while there. I mean, my taste came back and my smell. Shortness of breath, but it's pretty much gone now. Sure. Too, well, that's you know. good. Glad to hear it. Yeah, it's just crazy stuff. Do they tell you you still need the vaccine? We're going to talk about dental here in a little bit. Do they still <laughs> tell you you need a vaccine, or do you have the antibodies where you don't need the vaccine? I have the antibodies where I don't, and I know some of the dental offices that I work for and with, they all went and got vaccines. Actually, I was supposed to get the vaccine the week that I um, became oh, sick geez. and positive. Yeah. So. They got the first vaccine and then they just got the second vaccine recently. And I had called to make sure maybe I can get my first one. And they said, nah, I got to wait like 90 days. 90 days you know, after you, yeah. you tested positive. Interesting. Yeah. Before I can get it. I'm allowed to 
be in the dental office and see patients and we wear everything anyway, all the protective you know, sure. PPE and everything. I'm not worried about that. It just, sometimes it was just the ideas of some of the patients coming in. But as far as I'm concerned, the antibodies and everything else, I'll get my vaccine when I'm able. Yeah. Just to double make sure. Interesting. Yeah. Why not? Well, Tom, we appreciate you coming on the podcast. No, I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so Tom, I know you on Instagram. I know you do a lot of really cool things, not just in <laughs> dental, but your art is like art art you're doing things that like artists do not just dental <laughs> technology and there's got to be a defining line between the technician artist and i don't know is the word traditional artist is that is that good i, I guess know. i don't know like yeah real artist <laughs> <laughs> real artist what came first oh definitely the artwork you know artwork and music which you know but now that i've been doing it for so long like all three of them kind of tie together and each one helps out the other one, you know, the art definitely helps out with, with the dental side of it, you know, as far as like the creativity and things like that. But yeah, the, I mean, I've always done artwork and then quite a few years ago, I quit my full-time job at a steel mill, which I wasn't real thrilled with and started in a dental field with a friend of a friend that was a dentist and wanted me to do dentures for him. So, <laughs> so a friend asked you to do dentures and you didn't know any dental technology or? No, now he's a lifelong friend. It was Dr. Dennis Keyes. He wanted somebody to do dentures for him. And I'm, at the time, I'm like, what? What are you talking about? I've never done that before. Yeah. Kind of turned him down. Like, eh, no, I don't think that's going to happen. I well, work with steel. Yeah, I work with steel. <laughs> and then like six months later, he called me back and the girl that he was going to train quit and, you know, whatever, for whatever reason. And, and I was like, you know what? I took the opportunity. Interesting. It was life-changing. I mean, I had no idea about dental whatsoever. And I had no idea about dentures. So- I always say I learned from the ground up, which was a great thing. I was a, I was an assistant for five years. Oh, really? I needed to learn the dental you know, side of things and just being an assistant. And then I almost went into just doing an assistant. You know, I, I, I really, I really dug it. You know? Yeah. I really liked it. I really dug it. So I knew it was going to be something that was going to stick with me. And then started doing dentures and classes and fast forwarding to all of that. The hardest thing for me was being in a small practice with one dentist and he just taught me old school, which now when I look back is like the best training that you could ever have. Oh yeah. It's hard to get now. Yeah. You, and you can't find it now. And as I was working with him to learn everything, there's no big lab that was leading me by the hand saying here, do this, do that. You can't do this. Yeah, there was no train. Like, sure. It's a hard thing to do by yourself without going to school full time or, you know, I'm trying, you're trying to work and learn everything. So there was ups and downs for sure. It was pretty difficult to do that and kind of learn on your own in uh -huh. a way. But like I said, the technology that he gave to me and now it's like, that was the base from everything I do now, you know? Yeah. I like the old school techniques because a lot of that you, you still use today, even though you don't think you're using it. But sure. The fundamentals are still there. Yeah, the fundamental. Yeah, it's yeah. So, how old were you when you got into this field? I mean, were you a teenager? Were you in your twenties? I quit the steel mill in two thousand, so I was probably in my late twenties. Oh wow! So you got into this field kind of maybe early thirties. Yeah, yeah kinda... I mean, a little older than what you usually hear. Yeah, exactly. So it was kind of difficult to just have in that time frame because I went from a full time job to being an assistant yeah and then learning my way back up again you know so whose idea was it to have you assist first did you ask or was the doctor like you know i think you need to know why you're doing this i think it was kind of like a mutual thing like look i have no idea and you know <laughs> <laughs> i have no idea what i'm doing so i just i think it was just a mutual thing like yeah. all right come in because i wanted to know if, if i liked it or not too i you know i could have went in there and been like oh this you know this yeah. is horrible it's not for me and then you know bailed out so it was a good testing ground of finding out if I wanted to move on further with the career and, and the dental thing. And now, you know, don't want to ever look back because it's just, it's been progressing every year better and different and more, you know, it's just, it's crazy now if you look back from when I started to what I'm doing now. Oh, for sure. I mean, the last 10 years has just been crazy how much has changed you know and then and of course, then he retired. And I'm like, oh, great. I've only worked for one dentist for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> so how long were you with him god it was probably i'd say i don't know 15 years really 10 years i don't know a long time it morphed into the, you know being an assistant and then working in the lab and then working more in the lab and then 
going to training for dentures. And then I'd come back, I'd do like weekend training mm-hmm. in York, Pennsylvania at Dents Ply. And then sure. it was kind of cool because you came back and then whatever you learned, you kind of put towards what you were doing, you know, in the world for going in and seeing patients and doing it, you know, so. Yeah. And everything you were doing was only for this one doctor at this point. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It progressed where I was just working in the lab the whole time. And then I built a lab in my house and then it was kind of like, okay, I wasn't even going in anymore. I was just kind of working just for him back and forth. And then he retired mm-hmm. and then it kind of threw me out there like, oh, okay. But right before he retired, I started getting my CDT. Oh, there you go. Yeah. You know, he never cared about it and I, I never cared either. I'm like, you know, you know, what's the difference? I've been working for him forever, sure. you know, kind of thing. Yeah. But when I knew he was going to retire, then I decided to, if I'm going to put myself out there, it's probably a good thing to do. Yeah. That was one of the hardest things ever <laughs> to do it, really? to get your CDP without any like formal training. I'm not a book smart kind of guy. You know, I'm a hands on yeah. kind of guy. Sure. You're ordering all this. What was it? The Air Force manuals. You know, it's 2,000 oh, pages. Yeah, for, yeah. Like, it's daunting how big it is. It's huge. It's and then, huge. you know, whatever. For 150 questions, you're like, oh my God, you know. Yeah. So, um, did you pass it on your first time? No. <laughs> uh, Hate to say that. I know people that haven't passed it their first time. I mean, it's it's no big deal. I mean, it's... It was like a learning. Absolutely. It It says more to go back and take it a second time. Yeah, I felt so much more at ease. I passed the hands-on test, you know, right away. Sure. So that was easy. I went up and took that. And then, yeah, the written test was a little difficult. I was more nervous than anything. Yeah. And I'm sure there's other people like me that don't work in a big lab because where I went to take it, you know, it was a bigger lab. So everybody worked in the lab and they walked in the room and then took the test where... Yeah, you know, I was driving five hours to take a test. You know, now in it's an little... unfamiliar area, using unfamiliar yeah, and, things. And sure, you're all nervous and going in. Like I said, the second time was a lot better because I knew what I was going in. Yeah, you know. and you have that in what complete denture? Your CDT? Yeah, that's all I ever really wanted to do. I like the dentures. There's not a lot of guys that like the dentures. Most go into you know the ceramics and things, mm-hmm. but. Um, I enjoy it, and that's what I like to do, and it's kind of what I'm not stuck doing, but that's I'm happy where I'm at. Yeah, so you've opened up your own lab now, and it's still still out of your house? Yeah, you know, things kind of changed on that, too. You know, I did most of the work here at the house, mm-hmm. and then I've worked off and on for a couple of different, you know, bad dentists, and, you know, you didn't see eye-to-eye kind of thing. I was trying to, like, hook up with a one-on-one dentist like I yeah. did my whole life, and it wasn't working out. Funny story though, the dentist that I really work for now, a girl that used to work for me at the first dentist, she had a job at this new place and they opened up a brand new, (laughs) brand new uh, Cranberry Dental Studio. It was a brand new place and they wanted to have a grand opening because it's one of the most beautiful dental offices I've seen. Yeah. I got hired to play because I play guitar. They hired me as a musician. Nice. To play their, (laughs) to play the open house. And we started talking and I, they realized I did dentures and they didn't really do that many dentures because they don't like doing dentures. And yeah, bam, there I was. I was working for them. Then. <laughs> you got dental work out of a guitar gig. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> so You know, we talk a lot about marketing in this industry. I don't think I've ever heard that. So. <laughs> it just kind of fell into place with that one. Yeah, um, that's cool. You know, and there's a lot of dentists out there. They're younger. They're great, you know, cosmetic dentists. That's, you know, that's their thing. Actually, Dr. Brian Kleitsch, you know, he just won Mac Studios micro dental model search for Emacs. You know, I mean, they're, yeah, yeah. that's what they do. You know, they specialize in all cosmetic and full mouth restorations and things. And dentures weren't really on their radar. Mm-hmm. They don't like doing them. You know, they're not familiar with it. So it was kind of a great pairing to try to build up the removable part of their practice. Yeah, I mean, we know most dentists don't want to do removables. They just, yeah. it's, it's hard for them. It's time consuming. It's time consuming. They, they own the patient for life. It's just, yeah. it's, it's a lot. <laughs> so what do you do? Do you go in offering like help with the patient? Yeah, there's a certain Thursdays are denture day, basically. Yeah. They schedule all their denture patients on Thursday and they'll do the impressions. You know? So I do from beginning to end, basically. You know, they take the final impression I kind of meet with the patient, with the doctor, and we kind of go over kind of mm-hmm. treatment plan with, with them. And uh, and the patients really, they really like that. They get I to bet. meet me. Yeah. And chairside services, are they're getting pretty big now, which they, they weren't before. But yeah, you know, so I go home in the, in the lab, get the, you know, record base, blah, 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 bring it back. 
we work on the wax rims and right there and I can pick the teeth with them. And, you know, it's, it, it's kind of cool working with them. I do the setups mostly right there. Oh, really? Right there while they're waiting. Yeah, while they're waiting, if, if I can, if, and we try it in, and, you know, if we want to move things, and I'm right there. So everything is personalized and everything is on the spot. Yeah. It's not going back and forth. I'm not just sitting in a cubicle. And I really like meeting the patients and seeing their personality, seeing their facial features, mm -hmm. uh, picking the teeth that match. The artistic side comes out of me when that happens. Let me ask you, when you let the patient pick the teeth, how many choices do you give them? I can't imagine putting the the dent supply portrait portfolio in front of a patient and getting out of there within a uh, six hours. Yeah, I throw out the catalogs, but I narrow it down and say, you know, hey, these ones would be my recommendation. It, usually, the molds are so close. Yeah, they can't see. The I don't think they even ones. notice the difference. Sure, yeah, they, yeah, but they like the idea of okay, this is great. I get to choose, you know, and it it, it does. Sometimes I give them more of a square tooth or a ovoid tooth or something. So at least they have a kind of a little choice. And then, you know, the biggest thing is just the typical, like the shade yeah, and stuff like that. It's just the idea of them having a, a say in what they're getting. And yeah. It, it, really helps, it really helps them out. And they know I'm going to go home and bring it back. It's not going to wherever, China. Yeah, or, yeah, or whatever. Factory, you know. sure. Yeah, so it creates a, it, a pretty cool atmosphere for me and the patient and the doctors. And, um, you know, they don't have to worry as much for chair time too, because it's, it's a lot quicker. I could be in there doing the setups where they're working on another patient. And then when I'm ready, they come in and we try it in, you know, so it works out pretty good. Yeah. And I imagine legally you're not taking any final impressions or really trying anything in. You're just kind of letting the doctor do it and you're there. You're there. Yeah. Just yeah. doing it as support. But it's like I said, it's on the spot support, which is kind of nice. I think that's huge service. Yeah. It makes it easier for me because of it. And, you know, you don't have the changes back in the lab where you don't know what the changes, what the doctor wants, you know I mean? He's sure. telling me right there, Hey, yeah. let's do this. It's canted a little bit. Hey, let's, let's bring the central down a little bit, you know? So it's great for him because he doesn't have to take a bite and send it back to the lab. You don't have six resets. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So yeah, it's, it's a good thing. And now I'm doing the same thing with like the all on cases. Yeah. I'm the middleman between the dental implant, you know, Dr. Curry is like, you know, before I get too far ahead, like it all works out on who you're working with. Uh-huh. Sure. You know, if you work some, with some of the top dentists like I do in the area, it's a huge learning experience and you feed off of each other. Yeah, I bet. It works out to be in that team and, you know, kind of working around all of them because they're all on like the same kind of plane. They all work together with, you know, the implants and then the cosmetic dentistry and the restorations. And I'm kind of thrown in the middle because I don't do any PMMAs or like the digital printing or anything like that for all the zirconia. Uh -huh. But I help out with setting the teeth with the patient to be sent away to get a PMMA made, to have it scanned. Sure. And then the lab I work with, who they work with, it helps them out because they don't have, like you said, they don't have five remakes with the setup. Sure. So, you know, when I go in and do the, the wax rim with an all on case, you know, the, the doctors take it out we do a bite, you know, I kind of set the teeth up on it and we try it and the doctor tries it back in and every, everything's good. You know, I make some changes here and there and then, but then I just send it out to get a PMMA made. You know, so does it go through you or they just go directly deal with the lab that does the PMMA and zirconia? They go through the lab. Yeah. I'm kind of like I said, I'm kind of like the in-between guy. Yeah. I'll get it back to them and then they'll, they'll send it into the to the lab and then the PMMA would just be sent straight to them and then they'll do the insertion, you know. So yeah. it's kind of like a, a one time thing. I just go in and do the setups. Do you do any conversions or anything? Not yet, no. but at some point I would like to. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about it, just the opportunity will probably come there. I'm just not there yet. Mm -hmm. I guess my services are needed for the setups more than the conversion because the um, some of the labs that they work with, they send a, you know, they send a technician to help with the conversion. Sure. And then um, I'm kind of like the second one. I go in and help with the setup and then it goes back, you know, so... Right now, I like to get into that. I've never really done much, and I've never really sat in very much yeah. on you know on in the conversions. But that's like it's probably going to be the next step. Yeah, it's hard for a one person lab to do that because it's an all day thing. Usually, yeah, you sit usually. around and yeah, yeah, sit around and wait a lot. And yeah. doing the dentures as well. Now that I'm 
back in to Cranberry Dental Studios like every week. You know, I have a a small lab there that I can work out of, but you know, most of the most of the stuff is back here at the house, you know. Yeah. So I can kind of work there and here at the same time, you know, back and forth. I always joke around, you know, some of these dental offices, you know, they're huge. And then <laughs> and some of your posts you know, on Instagram, you know, it's it's so true. You walk in and the lab's like a big as big as a closet. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, sure. <laughs> You know, I mean, it's just funny, you know, the waiting room, I could live in the waiting room, but as far as a lab where you have to do all the work, there's no room. Crammed, <laughs> poor lighting, poor ventilation. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, it's the afterthought. <laughs> Having a, it's kind of like a mobile lab too, you know, so you, mm-hmm. I have to bring everything with me that you need. Cause if, of course, you know, you, some, you get somewhere and you realize you don't have something that you need and then. So you bring twice as much stuff that you probably will use in an appointment. <laughs> oh, sure. Especially if you're letting the patient choose teeth. What do you bring a whole tooth cabinet? <laughs> tooth card. Yeah, I, I have like a big catalog of tooth molds and cards, brand new ones. And the thing that's nice about the PMMAs, you're not worried about, you don't have to use all portrait because they're just scanning it and making a PMMA. Sure, yeah. It. They're just basing it off of tooth location. Yeah. yeah. I have so many different ones and different you know, styles and you know, you don't even have to worry about shade at that point. So it, it, you kind of just go in there and you're just looking for the, the shape and then, you know, the size of the teeth and things yeah. like that. They think it's pretty wild though. And you pull out a tooth chart. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> and, and they get to see them all, you know. Their eyes must go huge when they first see that chart and wonder, how am I ever going to pick a tooth? Yeah. So, yeah, it's, there's a lot to it when you're like a one-man lab, you know, yeah. I mean, you, you get, your billing department and your invoices and your, um, you know, your lab prescriptions and sending them out. And cause it's, I'm saying that because there's no billing department. Or <laughs> if you ever get a phone call and say, let me transfer you to a county <laughs> and walk out of the room exactly. and walk back in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a little tough. It's time consuming because you're, you're doing the work and you're doing the administration part of it sure. and trying to keep track of everything. And, like I said, the invoices and the and the receipts and the and the lab prescriptions, you know, I mean, it just it's a lot for for one person, you know. It is. I, I couldn't imagine doing it all. But at the same way, you know, I have control of everything, which is kind of nice. But, Absolutely. But then again, you can't blame it on somebody else. Like, ah, oh, this lab screwed up, or yep. the <laughs> the uh, you know, payroll department screwed up. No, it's I can't can't give anybody, you know. Yeah. Oh, did you get billed twice? Oh, my bad. Uh, <laughs> let me look into this. Uh. But yeah, it's it's been a great thing. I just started into the some of the gradia. I don't know. Do you ever do you work with the removables or do you? Yeah, I mean, our lab has removables. I'm not a technician like on a bench, but we deal a lot with removables. Yeah. Okay. But you just mentioned that you got into Gradia. I mean, that stuff is pretty cool. I've seen some it is really, really cool. beautiful stuff with it. Testing out on some temporaries and, you know, some, you know, PMMAs that, you know, they're going to, it's not going to final or anything like that. So it's, it's nice to work on it. And it, it, it that goes back to like the artistic thing, you know, I, just the colors and the shading and, the, and yeah. the molding, you know, it almost goes back to like, you know, like I was doing some of the statue repairs, you know, I think you saw that on. Yeah. Um, so a lot of that, transfers over into the into the dental side of it where that's more just having like artistic side of it yeah <laughs> and you know worrying about all the technical side of it so are you looking to eventually start doing pmmas yourself and kind of becoming more i don't want to say full service but offering more services you know i go back and forth on it you know i did go out to lab days in chicago and i uh-huh. was really you know i spent a lot of time looking at different ways that I possibly might be going to do that. And it, for me at this point, I was like, I don't know if I want to invest in that technology. It's expensive. And it's expensive, you know, and, and some of the seminars are like, well, you can make beautiful custom trades with this. I'm like, well, I'm not, you know, I'm thinking, well, I'm not going to spend, you know, 50 grand to make a custom tray for me right now. I hope not. (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) So at that point I was like, well, I, I might be okay where I'm at, you know, with what I'm doing. And, I do outsource like the PMMAs and even some of the, mm-hmm. even some of the dentures, the more busy I get with chair side services and setups, the less time I have to process a denture. Yeah. You know, and that takes time. And 
So some of the, just the final processing, like I'll do all the wax ups and everything like that and then just send it out to get processed because it's just copying what I'm sending them. Sure. It's time consuming when you're one guy. Yeah. You don't have five people doing denture processing. So how do you process your dentures? You know, for years I had the success injection system. It works great. You know, I always think it's like a dinosaur now, but I mean, they're still out there. People are still using them. I know. know? (laughs) It's like, you know, I keep thinking, oh, I'm going to upgrade, you know, to the newer systems and stuff. But I think at this point in my career and in the job, like if I'm going to upgrade, I'm just going to, you know, I'll outsource the final yeah, the final restoration instead of trying to do that just because of my time. Well, I think Dent Supply stopped making stuff for the success, I think. Yeah, I think yeah. they did too. You know, so what I have is it's either people that are really looking for that or, um, you know, I started with like the poor acrylics just yeah. for like temporaries and things like that. And that's, that's really great. You know, I mean, they say it's good for anything. You know, I kind of limit what I use that for. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you don't want to do a five or six implant locator denture made out of poor acrylic i mean they say that you can use it but mm, you know i, I you know it's it's, it, it's one of those things like it has its limitations sure. and, and it has its advantages for some things so most of my other stuff i'm just sending it out in with um i have a car or something like that you know yep. so and they look great some of the printer dentures i've seen haven't looked the greatest that i've seen i don't know i'm not big on that side of it yeah. yet i think they're still evolving with the printed dentures and things like that so basically i have time to Kind of wait and see how things pan out with technology and what I want to do. Yeah. If, if it's working for you, don't change. Don't mess with it. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, for what it is now, it's working out pretty good for with what I'm doing. And at some point, you know, the technology side of it is going to advance. And But doing that, you still need the, you know, you need the background of what we do on the workbench. Absolutely, you do. You know, um, I couldn't see going into the dental field and just, sitting on a computer all day without ever having to, you know, get your hands burnt with wax or, you know, just <laughs> jabbing yourself or, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's all like learn as you go the whole way up to that point. And with, so my next step, I think it just be, a, it would be like a learning process for the, to learn the technology and the programs Yeah. when I get to that point, which hopefully will be sooner than, you know, I, th- I think it's going to go that way. I just don't know exactly when or how, sure. you know. Yeah, I think eventually the clients and the doctors are going to need us to. And yeah. when they start demanding it, that's when I think we're going to see the, the true shift. Yeah. I've yet to have a doctor ask for a printed denture. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. everybody knows about it. They're out. They're all over social media. I've yet to have somebody ask me for it. Ask for it. Yeah. yeah I, and it's kind of great. You know, the younger doctors... Don't, I don't even know how much training they do in removables. As, no, as... Not much. <laughs> We're lucky to work with a VA hospital here, and every year they get residents straight out of school, and mm-hmm. they always tell me, you know, they're they're excited to try their first denture, or I only did one denture in school, or <laughs> I, I need to improve because they just don't. It's they just don't do it's it. Crazy. You know, they rely on the technicians, and you know that's for sure. And the CDT was some people don't even ask or they don't require it anyway. You know, I kind of did that just for me and just for not that it looks good, but you do learn what you need to learn from it. There was a lot of information that I'll probably never use again, but you know, I mean, it's good to have that background, but as, as far as getting it, you know, it's kind of like a feather in your cap kind of thing. I'm glad that I did. I'm glad. I wish it was required, but those that get it, knowing that it's not required, I think it speaks more on your desire to have a certain standard and to constantly be improving. And it it forces you, you know what I mean, to renew it every year. You know what I mean? It forces you to keep current with things, even if you're not using the current technology or uh, materials. And it's, you know, it could be overwhelming, especially, like I said, being a small, you know, one man kind of job. It is overwhelming. There's so much new material and, and everything has a good side and bad side. And, you know, I'm not at the position where I could just switch everything to try something and hopefully it works, you know? Yeah, yeah for sure. So I got to be careful of what I choose to use and what I don't use. And So what happened to all your work when you had COVID? Did all the doctors just understand and... Yeah, they were, I mean, they really didn't have a choice, but yeah, they didn't have a choice. And, you know, it, it's one of those things where you don't really think of it, but it's all all of a sudden, you know, you can't go in, and you know, denture patients 
you know, typically they're not the youngest patients. No, yeah, the, it's an older the, population. Right. Yeah, it's an older population. So. Wait, are you in Arkansas? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> they're afraid to come in to begin with, so things have kind of slowed down through COVID. But mm-hmm. then. On top of everything else, you know, if they found out I had it, then they're afraid to come back, sure. you know, just because they don't know what's going on. So most patients were really fine with it. They're just, you know, hey, whenever he's good to come back and, you know, yeah. we'll, you know, we'll just pick up again. They didn't want me to come back before I was able to or because even the 14 day quarantine, it wasn't enough time because I was still sick. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people don't realize that you don't get over everything in 14 days. It's not a magical yeah. number. Yeah. Yeah. That's just a, a number that they throw out there. So it was like, they kind of just moved all the patients around and, you know, like I said, most patients were fine with it, you know? So that's cool. it kind of worked out at the, you know, if you can get COVID at a good time, I guess it was around the holidays because the office was oh, shut. There, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Most offices were closed for Christmas. They were closed for New Year's, you know, yeah. the schedule was late because of all the holidays. So yeah, if I was going to get it, that was the perfect time to get it. Yeah. If you can find a silver lining. <laughs> that was the silver lining. <laughs> yeah. Of course, as soon as you come back though, bam, 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 you know, everything. Oh, was- I bet. Yeah. And even artwork, you know, I thought during everything is like oh, i'll be able to get down to the studio and work yeah you know, that didn't happen either you know it's hard yeah. enough just to get out of bed and to walk across the room let alone try to do something not even that strenuous but it seemed like you were doing something really yeah strenuous. yeah so let's talk about your art studio is it share space with your dental studio no you know i almost did that my wife and i purchased it's a you know a it's a warehouse, you know, uh-huh. personally, like, I don't know, maybe six or seven years ago. And the idea was, wow, we got this big building, you know, we could, it could be my art studio. It's, you know, kind of a garage thing, a storage space, you know, yeah. my dental lab. Well, it just didn't seem to work out right for that. I have to have like separation. I get that. So when I walk downstairs into the lab, I know it's a dental, it's a dental day. Yeah. When I would go down to the studio, when I walk in the studio, I know it's an art day. I don't think I have enough focus. I know I don't have enough focus to try to do <laughs> <laughs> to walk into the art studio and say, "All right, am I going to do dentures today? Am I going to work on artwork?" You know, there's too much there. I have to be focused a little bit more. I find that interesting. I mean, it's good that you're able to see that for yourself and understand yeah. it. And it, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, but being able to to say to yourself, I need this separation. I get it. <laughs> it took me a long time. Yeah. To figure that out. But then when I do go down into the lab and it's a denture day, then my ADD takes over and I can't <laughs> do one thing. So doing five cases at one time with different steps of each one yeah. is right up my alley. Yeah. Like, I love that. Hey, whatever works, man. <laughs> you know, to be focused on something for a real long time, you know, I kind of lose focus, but I can jump on the other thing and, and, and work on that. And I do that in artwork as well. Like you got to get burned out on one piece of art or one painting or something. So halfway through, instead of fudging your way through, you know, I start on another one. Interesting. Then, so I kind of do that with dentures and my art. I make it work for me, I guess is what I, I should say. Yeah. Instead of letting it distract from me and make it work for what I need to do at that day or to get it done. Yeah. So your art is mostly what paintings? It's actually chalk pastels. Okay. And I do it on wood, like Oak. I do oh. it on Oak now. I tried, I've tried different woods, uh, different kind of wood um, material, but the Oak is like one of the best ones that I like to work with. And the chalks, you rub them in with your fingers and I can get the shading right. And, you know, and then when you clear coat over top of it, the wood grain shines through, it comes through the chalk. Yeah. You know, it, it, it makes it pretty cool. It's not, you know, just like a acrylic paint or anything sure. like that. So it almost looks like a stain. I didn't realize that was chalk. Wood. I saw some stuff yeah. that you were doing online. I didn't realize it was chalk. Yeah. You know, everything I do now, it's kind of like my style and my thing. So that's, you know, if I did a painting on a canvas, uh-huh. I don't think they would know it was mine. You know, they like, yeah. this isn't. This isn't Tom's, you know, it looks a little bit different. Um, do you usually do commissioned work or? Yeah, I am lucky. Knock on wood. Yeah. On, the... on oak. Yeah, on <laughs> oak. Yeah, I'm, my oak table here. I'm a commissioned artist. Like I don't just go down the studio and draw flowers. Yeah. You know, everything I do is bought or sold. You know, I mean, there are some 
pieces. Uh, that's why I don't I don't do that many shows anymore because I don't want to have a whole stockpile of stuff just laying around hoping somebody somebody buys it. Yeah, like I said, I'm really lucky that I keep getting calls for. Oh well, yeah, for thing you know, and you know, your five or six paintings behind which is a good thing you know i always have something to work on and not that saying that like i said i go down and you know if i do get bored or something you know i'll jump off but most of it will be another commission piece that i'm getting started on or something sure. you know, so who usually um, commissions you what sort of i get so many different you know there's a lot of businesses not saying that i'm like a graphic designer but yeah a lot of businesses that want custom artwork for their lobby or oh i um, see yeah for their offices like you know i've done a lot of quite a few like lawyer offices where they want me to come in and do five paintings, two for the hallway, one for the waiting room. And it, even some dental offices. I've done quite a few. Oh, for really? dental offices. Interesting. Yeah. It, yeah. My son goes to a pediatric dentist and you know, there's a big, you know, five foot painting every time we walk in there and he has to chuckle and say, that's my daddy's, you know, it's kind of, <laughs> um, did you do it and get free dental care for your kid? <laughs> no, was there some no, sort I of trade? <laughs> did it work that out? What was I thinking? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do they ask you what to do the art of, or do they give you free reign? I mean, just like, you know, don't be offensive, have fun. Yeah. You know, some of my stuff, you know, you've seen it. Some yeah. of it's pretty abstract, um, very like cubist. Some people just want that, you know, they sure. kind of just, they don't, they don't want to, but then there's other people that want figures in it. Like, well, for that, that dental office, you know, they wanted like, not like children, children, but like you could tell they were children, like in an abstract form, like a figure with balloons and yeah. you know, bright colors and things like that. So a lot of people give me what ideas they have and then they kind of let me run with what they want. And some people don't, they just said, Hey, this is, these are the colors or, yeah. you know, here's a picture, make it look like a painting. A lot of restaurants and like I said, more businesses yeah. like that, like restaurants and things. There was a, a restaurant in town. That's how I got my start. Commissioned me for some really large paintings and they just opened and uh, it's called the Brick House. And mm -hmm. I just started hanging my artwork there. And then, you know, he bought paintings and then people started buying paintings. Oh, it, very it all, cool. It all went from that to doing it full time. But it started off in a restaurant. I think, you know, people stare at a painting long enough and yeah, oh, yeah. a bottle of wine into it. They want to walk out with it. <laughs> <laughs> So it, it was a win-win for me, the, uh, yeah. the person buying it and the bar owner, you know, so um, that's how that got started, which is kind of, that's a whole nother story. But that's how it started was at a restaurant and people started seeing my work and they were big paintings. Some of the paintings were, you know, the one mural is probably, I don't know, 10 foot by 20 foot. No kidding. Wow. But then I'd put little paintings around that people could actually buy. Sure. Not that they buy it, but I get a lot of commission work from them seeing it. That happens with everything, even with, with the dental field and artwork. It's amazing what Facebook and Instagram, you you post some pictures and people just follow that and they're like, oh, wow. You get work from that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's amazing. From just posting some things and you get, you know, recognized. And so I kind of use that as a marketing sure. tool for both. But yeah, so when everything's hitting on all cylinders, which it is right now with You're busy. work, <laughs> statue repairs, dentures, chair side services. Yeah, yeah it, it can be pretty hectic and you have to stay motivated. You have to stay focused. There's no one pushing you to tell you you have to do it. So yeah. Do you think your art changed the more you got in to removables and doing dentures? That's a good question. I never had that question before. I don't know. Do you think he saw things more in, in a curve of speed type? <laughs> I don't even know what I'm asking, but you know what I mean. I, mean... <laughs> I don't know. I could probably say it has. Yeah. And the opposite too, like. The more of these setups I'm doing comes from the way my art has mm -hmm. changed. Yeah, I don't know. That's that's a good question. I've ne never had anybody ask me that before. I know they... This picture has no midline. <laughs> <laughs> the midline's off, you know. Yeah, I'm, I get to go to the right a little bit. This, yeah, this is a little bit posterior than I want it to be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, they definitely help out each other. And I they, bet. Yeah. I bet. A lot of it comes from... You know, a lot of these statue repairs and I had to repair like a resin statue that I've never dealt with before. And, you know, I'm like, sure, I can do it. one of those things like, yeah, I'll, I'll figure it out. I used like triad gel to like hold pieces together. You know, nice. On the statue. You so know? randomly someone had a broken statue and said, oh, here's a guy that can make dentures and paint. Yeah. Can you fix a statue? Yeah. And I had old dental tools. You know, everybody has your special carvers and things. I had yeah. old, old carvers laying around that I didn't use anymore. And they're down in the studio right now. And I, you know, ground them for like 
for statue repair, but you know, I have a grinder down there, you know, I can work on statues. It's, it's kind of like being a jeweler, I guess. Yeah, you know? I mean, sure. you know, I'm use the same lathe and everything as denture technicians, but I have experimented a lot <laughs> with dental materials and statue repairs. Interesting. <laughs> You know, it works. If it works, it works. Is it mostly like concrete statues? I mean, I don't even know what um, statues are made out of. Bronze? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I've never dealt with like the the high, like the metal ones. Um, yeah. Most of them, I don't think even think the clients know what they they're made of until like they break apart. And like sure. the one I just prepared, a lot of them are really old ones, and you could tell because they're not. It's not like a mold. Yeah. It's actual plaster, and there's horsehair and hay on the inside as like. Oh, it's like a, a bulking bond. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a bonding. So this last one I did, you know, there was horse hair in the middle of it. Um, interesting. Gross, um, but interesting. Yeah, I know. So like the plaster works. And then I, a couple of this summer, you know, it was solid concrete. You know, it was a five foot solid concrete. Oh. The thing weighed 400 pounds, you know. I, I bet. In my art studio, I had a motorcycle jack and I was like wheeling on it around on my motorcycle jack. I Some have been sandstone, hmm. which are a little bit harder to work with, but they were just missing pieces and... Yeah, so they're all they're all different. You could tell the newer, cheaper ones. Like I said, they're more of like a a resin. They just yeah, kind of, they just pour them in a mold and pour them in a mold, and you know they break them out. But some of them need painted. That goes back to the the gradia. That's why I wanted to get in the gradia because a lot of these statues come in, and I have to completely repaint them, and they're or they're white, and they want them painted. Mm. And it's the same as like PMMA. Like some of the dentists were like, uh, "I got this PMMA back," and the the patient kind of freaked out. You know. It's white. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's monochromatic. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why I decided to start doing that because it's just like having a statue that's white and I, I have to paint it. So I get a monolithic PMMA back that I, I throw the um, the gum tissue on. And... Have you ever tried Gradia on the statues? <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> I don't know. Could I, work. <laughs> I, yeah, I'll let you know. I'll get back to you on that one. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it might be a little bit too expensive to be putting probably, on statues. Probably, <laughs> probably. Yeah, I don't know. I like it. It just keeps me. It it keeps me going. You know, I wake up every day loving what I do. I mean, I sometimes yeah. Everybody has those days like, oh, yeah, you know, you're having problems with the setup or something didn't work out right or the bite came back wrong. And it's the same with like with artwork. I'm always nervous the day of the painting when the client picks it up. You know, your heart's fluttering a little bit. Like, oh, they're gonna like it. They're gonna hate it. Yeah. And you do that with the denture too, and you, especially if you're there to seat it. <laughs> yeah, if you're, yeah, yeah. I'd rather not be like I'd rather. The, but the dentist, of course, they always want me there in case you know they can blame it on me. You know, I'm right standing. Sure. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it doesn't fit. Oh well, you know, not um, my fault. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that you know, those things are always in the back of your mind, even with some of the. The statues and the dentures, you know, there's some stuff you're trying that you never tried before and, and you just hope it it works out or, you know, when there's a problem, you got to fix it. That's one thing I've learned when you're a one man artist or doing statue repairs or working on dentures. I can't say, hey, what should I do? You know, I can't, how, how can I get this tooth to, you know, to occlude or, you know, I mean, you got to yeah. work it out. Yeah. I don't have somebody to, to just lean over and ask their opinion. Or pawn the work off to. <laughs> yeah, can you do? Yeah, can you do this for me? Yeah, because I don't want to do it. So it, it's a good thing, and, and it's it's kind of nerve wracking at the same time. Yeah, I don't know at this point if I could ever like go work at a big lab. It'd be different. It could, you know, you get trained like as we were talking. I'm a, I'm a creature of habit. Yeah, things have to be where they're at. Or if I move something, you know, I'm like, oh, why did I move that for? And I move it back the next day. You know, it's just one of those. So it would be different working for somebody else than what i'm doing now well yeah i mean i applaud all technicians that can do it by themselves i don't see how but i also see the appeal yeah and the control and all that i didn't really have a choice it's what i not grew up with but it, yeah. it was what i it was how i was taught you know i was never taught in the, the biggest lab that i ever went to like you said it was like dense supply for like their courses which i don't even they probably don't even do anymore but that was like you know that was a long time ago yeah and getting back to some of the dentists some of the ones I work for, like I said, they, if they did do dentures, it was 35 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and they weren't doing what we're doing now as technicians. So, they, you know, teeth. <laughs> yeah, 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 fixing the pin, you know, trying to get that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. even some of the materials, 
it just so different than what they're used to. And and some of them have a problem with that. Like they're like, well, we did it this way. Well, we don't do it that way anymore. You know? Yeah, no, sure. Um, technology advanced. So you kind of go with, with the advancement. And, and then some of the newer dentists don't really know because they weren't taught in anything. So there's a big gap there where I think technicians kind of fall right in the middle. Yeah, no, I agree to that. Between the dentists and the labs. Now that the technicians are an important part of the, of, the dental practice or the dental field, I should say. Yeah. And then you also are a musician who plays in a band, right? Yeah. How the <laughs> yeah. hell do you find all this time? <laughs> COVID was, was a good thing for that. It's just kind of knocked everything off, of, you know, with... Um, yeah, not a whole lot of live, live shows going on. You know, it was weird. Like right in the fall, though, like places that could do outdoor events were hiring me to do outdoor events. So I took them, you know, I mean... Yeah, sure. If I could play outside, I would play outside. No, you know... Even some of the smaller places they wanted, I opted out of those closed gigs. But yeah, people are, are they're they're being optimistic because I'm already booked for, you know, I got a, a date in May and a couple yeah. in July. I guess like they're already booking out. Hopefully, you know, things are gonna level out. No, I get that. Yeah, yes. dental conventions are coming back. People are planning. I, I mean, you got to plan. If you don't plan, I mean, it's easier to cancel than to not plan and not have anything scheduled. Sure. So, you know, I've done a couple live. And that's my next one. It's like March 18th or something. You know, it's like a, a closed circuit Zoom concert where they're paying me for like, you have to pay to get on it or something. So, I mean, there's ways, huh. there's ways to get around. I miss playing live. Mm -hmm. It's not the same playing in front of a camera by yourself, you know. I bet. <laughs> yeah. So I miss the the live part of playing. And, and half of my art studio is like a music studio. So I have everything set up down there as a PA and a drum set and all my guitars and everything. So you got stuff everywhere. I got stuff everywhere. Right? Even in my lab. I joke around. There's guitar and ukulele hanging in the lab because sometimes, like I said, when I lose focus and I get bored, I'm always listening to music. It's, it keeps me going. But uh, sure, you set down your denture and pick up your guitar and play for even if it's ten minutes. It's a nice little break. It's like a zen break. I bet. You know, and you, yeah. And you go back. I get that. Yeah. So it's like guitars in the dental lab and there's guitars in the art studio. So, <laughs> 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 like you said, I have a lot of laying around everywhere <laughs> <laughs> so if you had to give up everything except one what would you choose to do would you stay just making dentures would you do the statues the art the music man that's a tough one you're spread thin man yeah that's a tough one for me because you know i love doing the dentures i love seeing the transformation from people, even with an old denture to a new denture or a, a new sure, a new yeah. patient that never had dentures, and they're excited with their temporary, let alone their you know their their permanent. Yeah, um, like this is great. So that's really fulfilling, is seeing the transformation. Yeah. But at the same time, when something doesn't fit and they're like complaining and like, oh god, I, I'd rather work at McDonald's and and make this denture, you know. So, <laughs> yeah. But the same with artwork. Yeah. There's, there's days that I I love going down the studio, and there's days that it just nothing's there, or if. The, I don't know. That's, I don't think I'd be able to choose one that I, so you just give it all up. I mean, <laughs> music's fine. I could probably give up music, like playing out. Yeah. I don't want to be nine years old trying to play at a bar. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, do you want to be 90 making dentures? Uh, yeah. You know, people say, when are you going to retire? I'm like, yeah, when I die, that's when, I'm, that's my retirement <laughs> plan. You know, I can make dentures so I can't do it anymore. So I, I like all of them in the, in the same, you like them and you hate them all, you know, all together yeah and there's good days and bad days and I, I i find each one of them has its pros and cons now quick story though i don't know if other technicians have ever had this but last year i did get my ulna nerve replaced in my elbow and then i had all my trigger fingers in my right hand from dentures i had to be from dentures from overuse like i'd have surgery Really? Did you ever hear of that? No, you, it wasn't because of guitars well, or something. Probably everything that I've done, but it. Most, well, yeah, most of it, it doesn't help. When I was working on dentures, like after like an hour, my hand would go numb and I couldn't hold on to the cast or whatever I was doing. It was, it was crazy. Really? And then I would wake up and my hand was like in a fist and I couldn't open it up. I've never had that, and it all came from like a nerve in my elbow or something, and then I had to have hand surgery and. It's great now. I mean, but so what do they do? They disconnect the nerve, or I mean, you can't really. No, it, I don't know. There's like a slot in your elbow that the nerve goes through, and mine kind of slid out with yeah. pinching it, which was causing oh. problems down my arm. I, which I didn't know it came from the elbow, but yeah. So they put that back in, like the sleeve of the elbow, and then 
your trigger finger. I mean, they go in and they, I don't know, they, they release the tendons in your finger. Wow. Because at night your tendons would curl up. And like I said, my hand would be like in a fist in the morning. It was just my right hand, of course, you know, um, and, yeah, yeah. and you couldn't open your hand up or your fingers up. And then of course my fingers were going numb and that was from my carpal tunnel that I had to fix, which is kind of common, but the trigger, you know, so I had like, um, wow, you're, you're a mess. Man. Bionic man on my right side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I feel pretty good now, but yeah, that was, <laughs> you know, between that last year and COVID, yeah, I've had, you know, every it's been a crazy ride on my body with, with everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ready for wow. Break. So that didn't help, you know, dentures and, and guitar and everything else I did that did not help the hand situation. It was one of those things I had to get done. You need a hobby that yeah, doesn't use your hands. Yeah. Uh, read a book, which I can't because I, <laughs> I don't have enough focus to sit down and read a book. <laughs> I'm thinking about all the stuff I need to be doing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, Tom, we came up on an hour really oh, quick. Wow. Yeah. That was great. That was some pretty cool stuff, man. Yeah. I, I think you're killing it what you're doing. I love seeing you do all that you do. I mean, the statue repair, the art, the dentures. It's fun. The music. I mean, that's it's pretty cool. Yeah, it is cool. And hearing how you're able to do it chair side and really make that difference to the patient and how you're able to take that patient and turn it into what they want that's cool it is cool we don't get to do that a lot technicians you know no. I mean, you make it you send it out and that's it yeah it's it's been a pretty neat thing you know i just i like it you know i'm a people yeah person. you're in a special spot yeah i'm a yeah. people person so it works out pretty good for me the dentist like i said you know dentists enjoy it they like being there watching it and they like watching what i do too so it's kind of cool but yeah, it's all good. Yeah. I'm keep trucking along, you know. Awesome. Well, we appreciate you coming on the podcast, Tom. I appreciate you having me. It's really cool. I, I like listening to the podcast. I, I like your little memes that you post all the time. It's really <laughs> it's funny. I, I laugh every time. I Sometimes, you know, it's almost spit your coffee out kind of thing. It's, those are great. Yeah, it, it kept me sane during the quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> and then it just never stopped. So. It's, it's great. I love it. But I love your podcast, too. It's, it's a cool thing you're doing. I really appreciate it. Nah, we appreciate you and appreciate you coming on. So, all right. Well, thanks. Well, hopefully we'll be able to get to see you soon sometime. Yeah. Man. Hopefully one of these, when the conventions come around, I'll, you know, we'll, we'll hook yeah. up. Yeah. Definitely. Awesome. Well, we appreciate it, Tom. All right. Thank thanks you so much. much. Uh, thanks so much. Bye. Whitmix is now providing its milling customers with Prima milling tools. The high-performance milling tools engineered specifically for Roland Mills. This new tool range outperforms the competition. The results show that not only does the tool last 29% longer than most others, their precision creates a pinpoint accuracy ensuring a perfect fit for the patient. Whitmix's own digital technical support team said, quote, The tools are a drop-in replacement for Roland tools so there's no need to make changes to the software to accommodate them. All of the Prima tools seem to have an exceptional life and produce a great surface finish. We recommend switching to them. The uncoated tools save up to 40% per restoration over the market leaders, but you can now save 20% on these great tools through January 10th, 2021. To take advantage of this offer, visit whitmix.com or call one 800 626 Five six five one, and as always, we appreciate your support of the podcast, Whitmix. Well, thank you, Tom. I'm super sorry that I missed the podcast, but I really had a wonderful time in Wyoming with my family. I'm super bummed I missed the conversation, especially since I was there the first time when we had technical difficulties. Well, we love to talk to people in our industry. It's also really cool to hear about the amazing things that they do off the bench. So thank you for sharing that with my partner. But what's even cooler is hearing how they sometimes blend together to make each one better. So don't hesitate to get in touch with us at info at voicesfromthebench.com if you want to come on this podcast and talk about what you do off the bench. We would love to hear it. And as you know, we're on our three-year anniversary. We will welcome anybody with a story. And we really, really love talking. So come on, email us. Awesome. Or hopefully come see us at a show sometime this year. Right on. <laughs> but you won't be there. I will. Yeah, uh -huh. well, I'm going to send you with the microphones. <laughs> all right, everybody. That's all we got for you. We appreciate you. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. Well, 
one of us is going to the beach. Yeah, I wonder who that is. 